Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Alessia Belisario, and I'll be talking about the defer directive today. Um, so this will be a lightning talk with lots of lightning bolt emojis. Um, and a very quick thanks to the organizers for having me here. This has been just such a wonderful conference um, already. So let's dive right in. Um, I work at Apollo, as I mentioned. Uh, I'm a staff engineer and a core maintainer of Apollo Client. And I worked on bringing defer support to Apollo Client, which was the genesis for this talk. Um, and I'm at LS Bell on the internet. Um, so a very brief history of defer. Um, defer and stream were first described at React Europe 2016 by Lee Byron. And you'll often hear those two directives in the same sentence. And that's because they're the subject of a single proposal. Um, so we won't be talking about stream much today, uh, or at all, really, aside from mentioning that it's a way of you know, allowing your server to deliver a partial list of, uh, or partial items for a list type in an initial response, and then subsequent items um, for that list type will stream in later. Um, and these two directives are both part of a single draft proposal that has reached stage two within the last uh, year. And that is a signal that libraries should implement support as experimental functionality. Um, and so that's what we did um, in Apollo Client. Uh, it's also the final stage before that proposal is ratified in the GraphQL spec. So it's a significant milestone. It's very exciting. Um, and so what's the elevator pitch for defer? Um, this is a, a way of annotating your, uh, your query um, to deprioritize the delivery of some fields on that query using fragments. Um, so we, we don't defer individual fields, but we can wrap them in a fragment and defer that fragment. And what's really interesting to me about both defer and stream is that they conceptually, they encompass you know, both the power of um, this using a directive um, to enable these capabilities, but to me, ultimately, it's what's happening under the hood, and that is being able to leverage this incremental delivery over HTTP response format uh, that we'll be looking at today. Um, now, that response format is really a general mechanism that can be used to power multiple different features. Um, and I think we'll be seeing more and more features in the GraphQL space that use this incremental delivery uh, response type um, because it is so powerful. Um, and so before we look at the low level response that we're getting and, and how all of these things work, um, how they're implemented, we're going to take a very quick look at the problem that Defer is solving here. And so here, if I can find my mouse on the screen here. Um, oh, and, and by the way, for those who are following along, the slides, the link is mentioned in the top right-hand corner there, ls.co forward slash defer. Um, so this is just an embedded iframe here. This is a toy app that I made that renders a bunch of Pokemon, of course. And when we click uh, on an individual Pokemon, we're executing the query on the left there. So we're fetching some stats, abilities, held items, whatever those are, sounds kind of ominous, um, and a list of regions, but we can think of this query as being even longer, right? We're fetching lots and lots of fields. Um, and the strength of GraphQL is also a weakness here, you could argue, because you know our query can describe all of the data needs of our UI uh, and make a single network request, but we know that that network request is going to be as slow as our slowest fields. Um, so this is frustrating because, you know, so many fields here could be delivered really quickly, um, like our regions, for example. Um, but, you know, without defer, we would have to split this up into multiple queries, which defeats the original, you know, kind of intent of GraphQL. And, you know, we're working against ourselves here if we have to um, split up this query. So here is, you know, uh, the same exact query, but we've just wrapped the slow fields there um, for our Pokemon in an inline fragment, slapped some defer on there, and that's literally the only code change in our client. And now all of a sudden we see those regions 
um, appear right away, even as our details are still pending. Um, and that is really the elegance and just the power of, you know, directives in GraphQL in general, but specifically with Defer. Um, and there's a lot happening to make this possible and to make the DX, you know, so, um, so pleasant. Um, oh, sorry, hold on, I got out of sync here. Um, okay, so that felt pretty magical. And what's going on under the hood? Um, so this is the exact request that our client uh, just made in the browser. Um, like if you popped open your network dev tools and just clicked, you, you know, uh, your uh, mouse's, uh, you know, you right clicked on the request and copied it as a curl request and pasted it into your terminal. Um, this is the post request that we are making. Um, and I think it's useful just to pick apart because um, there's a lot of interesting things here. Um, and I wrote it out as a curl request because you can actually click that button, copy it to clipboard, and just put it in your terminal, run it yourself, um, see, see how it's working. So here we start with a post request because this is GraphQL. Um, we have our content type header of application JSON because we're going to send some JSON data with our request. Um, and this is where it gets interesting. We have this accept header that says, you know, accept multi-part mix. Um, we're telling our server that our client can speak this interesting uh, multi-part response format. And um, we're also passing this boundary value. Um, and we're saying, you know, this is the boundary in between the chunks uh, that will be received by the client so that the client knows how to parse out those messages, right? It, it, it's the delimiter between the data that our client's going to read. Um, and then we have this defer spec value here, which is specific to our Apollo router. Um, but this is just, you know, for backward compatibility because uh, our router and client are implementing a uh, draft two version of this proposal. We know it's going to change, uh, and this allows you to use it uh, in your apps today. And um, when it does inevitably change before it's finally adopted, you know, all of that will be opaque to you, the developer. Uh, we can just update our libraries and, uh, and you can avoid all the headache. Um, this is the URL to our Pokemon graph and of course our query and variables. Um, and so when you do run that in your terminal, this is a, a GIF that's just sort of a recording of what you see. So that's the first payload that's arriving, uh, the, the first chunk in between the GraphQL uh, boundaries there with our regions. And then we get the final chunk with that has next false um, uh, key on it there. And that's the, the final message that we receive and the request, uh, the connection is closed. Um, so that is a lot of information to, to ingest, but I, I think it's pretty cool that, you know, just by detecting the defer directive in the document, Apollo client is adding that accept multi-part mix header um, to tell the server that, you know, we're ready for um, the, these incremental messages to arrive. Um, and then in the browser, the fetch API gives us a readable stream of byte data through the, the body on our response object. Um, and the content type header on that response is multi-part mix. So Apollo client knows to parse the bytes in the readable stream chunks using that boundary. Um, and all of this is built using this content type of multi-part mix um, that was originally specified in 1992, um, <laughs> of course. Um, and I think that's really cool because, you know, this is, we, we saw some diagrams earlier today um, about the, you know, early or days of the internet. Um, and, and so to me, it's just really cool that, you know, GraphQL in 2023 has figured out a way to, you know, leverage this content type and sort of bend it to its will a little bit um, and, and make it really serve this interesting use case of uh, defer and stream and many other features that I'm sure will be built. Um, and one little fact of, uh, or piece of trivia here before I wrap up, is that uh, I hope it's legible to some of you, or most of you, hopefully, um, but in the original 1992 spec here for, or RFC, for uh, the multi-part mix content type, 
the boundary value that they give as an example is this like long string of letters and numbers um, because it needs to be unambiguous, right? Uh, it, we, we don't want to accidentally parse that in the middle of one of our chunks. Um, but for GraphQL's purposes, you know, a much simpler string uh, like GraphQL is fine. No need for something uglier because in GraphQL, we assume we're only delivering JSON and JSON never starts or ends with the unquoted characters of GraphQL. Um, it's just a little bit of trivia there. Um, so can you use defer? Yes, you can. We're very excited about it and I uh, hope you do use it. Um, you know, our Apollo router has this amazing capability called entity-based defer. And I couldn't cover all of that today uh, because I only had 10 minutes, but I hope you do check out that full stack tutorial. Um, and there are many other servers and clients, um, you know, along with Apollo client that support defer today. Um, there is this, you know, bit of compatibility, as I said, you know, um, which version of the spec do they implement? Um, but, you know, we're, we're getting very close to that final version. Um, and one other piece I'm excited about is a suspensible version of the use fragment hook in Apollo client. Um, I also couldn't talk about our new suspense hooks today, but um, defer is built on fragments. It's, they're sort of inextricably linked. And so a suspenseful use fragment will um, be, I think, a really important part of this story uh, of React Suspense support um, and using defer in Apollo Client. So that's all I have today. Thank you so much for, for listening. Um. And I think we probably have time for one question if there are any. Otherwise, our next speaker is standing by. Yes. Uh, yeah, the question was the link to the slides, and um, let me see here. It should be, um, yep, it should be uh, the link in the top right-hand corner, which is A-L-E-S-S dot C-O forward slash defer, um, and that should take you to the slides. Um, and I just tested it, and it looks like it's all working, um, but if not, find me in the hallway, and I'll be able to give it to you. Um, yeah, thank you so much.